This is Optimal Finance Daily, Episode 202, Why I Plan to Track My Spending During 2017, by J.D. Roth of MoneyBoss.com. And I am Dan, your personal narrator for today and every weekday here on Optimal Finance Daily. If you're new here, this is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, turning that great financial advice into audio that you can take with you anywhere. And today's post, as I mentioned, comes from J.D. Roth, a brand new author joining the show as a regular contributor. Although actually, that's not totally true because I've read him before, but as a guest author way back in episode 42, when I read his post, Don't Panic, Recovering from Financial Mistakes and Setbacks, which was a post on Ramit Sethi's site. But now he's going to be on the show more regularly since he's given us permission. And that is, uh, again, J.D. Roth of MoneyBoss.com. He's been reading and writing about personal finance for a decade now, and while he's financially independent today, he had over $35,000 of consumer debt uh, at one point. That was back in 2004, so he's definitely come a long way. And now, as you can tell from the title of today's post, he's going to be tracking his spending in 2017. And this is something we've been encouraging from the beginning of this podcast. We even have a spreadsheet to help you do it yourselves. And while JD will mention some tools you can use, if you want to try our spreadsheet for free, you can get it by joining our mailing list at oldpodcast.com. Plus, you'll get some other tools from us for free as well. So again, come by oldpodcast.com and uh, enter your email address there. Or for a faster way to join, you can text the word financial to the number 44222. But for now, let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. Why I Plan to Track My Spending During 2017 by J.D. Roth of MoneyBoss.com One of my goals for the coming year is to track all of my earning and spending. I've had a few folks ask me why I want to do this. Aren't you financially independent, they ask? If that's the case, then why do you care what you spend? Simple. Financial independence isn't some magic place where you no longer have to worry about money. Reaching FI doesn't give you a license to spend on whatever you want, consuming every luxury in the world. Financial independence only means you have enough saved and invested to support your current standard of living for the rest of your life, given some reasonable assumptions. Using my roadmap to financial freedom, financial abundance is the state of never having to worry about money again. At this point, you've saved so much money, you can do whatever you want without worrying about the financial consequences. I'm not there yet, and I probably never will be. Here's the thing about financial independence. You can lose it. Say, for instance, you've amassed a net worth of about $1.5 million, which happens to be close to the size of my own nest egg, and you spend $36,000 per year, which is what I consider my typical spend rate. In this case, you have indeed achieved financial independence. With the parameters and assumptions we typically use here at MoneyBoss, a nest egg of $1.5 million ought to support annual spending of around $60,000. But say you were to move from Omaha to someplace more expensive, someplace like San Francisco. And say that in addition to a jump in cost of living, you also experienced increased pressure to spend when you're hanging out with your new friends. If you suddenly found your annual budget was $100,000 or more, that net worth of 1.5 million no longer puts you in the category of financial independence. You were FI in Nebraska, but you're not FI in Northern California. Sure, you probably still have financial security with $100,000 in spending on $1.5 million of net worth. Your savings and investments will likely cover basic needs, but because you've changed your lifestyle, you're no longer truly financially independent. Now, I haven't moved cross-country to a more expensive city. I still live in Portland, which is plenty costly. I still walk most of the time. I'm still fairly frugal. But in the five years since I last logged my money moves, a lot of things have changed in my life. I moved out of my cheap apartment and bought a condo. I paid for the place outright, but between utilities, maintenance, and HOA, it costs a lot to live here. I swapped a low-rent neighborhood with lots of cheap places to shop and eat for a fancier area where restaurants are more expensive and all of the supermarkets feature boutique organic food. I went from being a newly divorced middle-aged man to dating somebody long-term. Expectations are different in a relationship than they are for single guys. Kim and I got a puppy and two kittens, These critters take money to maintain. Plus, just like everyone, I have a tendency to give in to lifestyle inflation. If I'm not scrupulous, little luxuries turn into big ones. Since returning from our cross-country RV trip, I've been tempted to spend more than in the recent past. Maybe it's because we intentionally did not buy things on the road. I don't know. Whatever the case, I've been updating my wardrobe, acquiring new gadgets, and rationalizing more books. In the grand scheme of things, I can afford this stuff, but that's not really the point. 
I'm a little worried my lifestyle has grown too large. If you put all of this together, you have a situation where I no longer know how much I'm spending, and that makes me uncomfortable. I say I spend roughly $36,000 per year, and that's been true in the past, but what am I actually spending? That's what I aim to discover. To that end, I'm going to track my money in 2017. In fact, I'm going to start this project as soon as I figure out which tool to use. I want to get a current baseline before I start trying to make corrections. My short-term challenge is to figure out how to track my spending. In the olden days, when the world was young, I used Quicken. Quicken isn't perfect, but it is familiar. I like its reporting features, and I like that it forces me to manually enter data. That's important because when I enter transactions by hand, I'm more aware of just where my money is going. To me, tools that automatically record transactions aren't helpful. They make it too easy to gloss over possible problems. I plan to give Mint and Personal Capital a try, but I suspect I'll settle on something like Quicken or a customized spreadsheet. Ultimately, I hope to accomplish two things with this project. I want to get a clear idea of what I'm actually spending, even if it's shocking. I can't make adjustments if I don't know what I need to adjust. I want to encourage Money Boss readers to track their spending too, even if it's only for a month or three. I want you to find your problem spots so that you can correct them. As soon as I publish this article, I'm going to get started. I'll unearth my disused mint and personal capital accounts. If I have to set up new ones, I'll document the process. Plus, After all of these years, I'll finally give YNAB a spin. I'll use all of these tools during December. At the end of the month, I'll write about my experience and share which tool I've chosen to manage my money during 2017. You just listened to the post titled Why I Plan to Track My Spending During 2017 by J.D. Roth of moneyboss.com. And he made a great point that actually physically entering in those transactions yourself makes a big difference. And that's why we encourage you to try this out as well, even if it's just for a week by using a simple spreadsheet. And we built one for you and it comes with a video tutorial. It's totally free and you can get it by joining our weekly newsletter email list. It'll all be delivered to you right away automatically. Plus you'll get some other tools we made just for you like a retirement calculator and more. To get those, come by oldpodcast.com and uh, just put your email address in there or you can text the word financial to the number 44222. And that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll be hearing from Kristen Wong. It's been a while since we heard from Kristen, so stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more, from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.